The Land Rover Defender is fitted with a mission control system. And like any other car, the Defender is producing nitrogen oxide gases and other annex gases in the exhaust fumes, which are very harmful for the environment. <clears throat> and that's why the Defender is fitted with a emission control system. Now, the emission control system is very simple. It actually consists of recycling exhaust gases back into the intake manifold in order to reduce the amount of oxygen that goes into the cylinder. And if we can reduce the amount of oxygen that goes into the cylinder, then automatically you reduce the burning temperatures. And if we can reduce the burning temperatures, then we can actually reduce the amount of annex gases that are being created inside the cylinder by the burning process. Now, there is a bit of a problem because the Defender has as well a turbo fitted. And the whole purpose of a turbo is actually to push as much air into the cylinders as you can. As much air as possible with as much possible oxygen inside. Because the more air, the more oxygen that we can get into the combustion chambers, the higher the burning temperature, but the more powerful the engine will be, the more horsepower is being generated by the engine. Now here we have a bit of a contradiction. And that's why the uh, Defender has what we call a modulated EGR system. And EGR stands for Emission Gas Recirculation. As I said, recycling exhaust fumes into the intake manifold. And modulated means that we'll only do this when we can afford it. Because remember, recycling gases into the intake means reducing the amount of power that is available to the engine. So if you're driving your Landy uphill and you demand a lot of power from that car or you're towing heavy loads, then the last thing you want is to have the Defender uh, been suffering from power loss. Power loss because the turbo isn't doing its effect anymore because we're feeding back these exhaust gases. And that's why the engine will not open up the EGR valve, which is fitted at the front of the intake manifold when there's a lot of power requirements for the car. The EGR valve will only open up when there is no power demand to the engine. For instance, you're cruising along on the highway and while you're cruising along on the highway, there is not much power requirement and hence the EGR valve will open up. Now, if you look on the EGR valve, you find only a vacuum hose on top of it. And many people believe that the vacuum hose is actually driven by the vacuum of the engine. Well, it's not. It is vacuum generated by the alternator, the vacuum pump, and then controlled by the EGR modulator. And the EGR modulator is nothing more than a solenoid, which is actually opening or closing a vacuum tap. So, if the EGR modulator is being activated, then it will apply vacuum to the EGR valve and the valve will open up and then we recycle exhaust gases into the intake manifold and we save uh, on the emission of exhaust gases. The EGR modulator is fitted at the inner right-hand wing of the Defender. The EGR modulator is controlled by the ECU or the engine control unit or the engine control and management unit which is sitting under the driver's seat and that device gets input from all kind of sensors it gets an input from your maximum airflow sensor which is sitting at your air filter box you also have the map the manifold absolute pressure sensor which is sitting at the intake manifold and the intake temperature sensor the rpm sensor the engine temperature sensor and several other sensors that are all around the car will form an input to the ECU, including the throttle position and the reaction on the throttle, the gas pedal. So whenever you demand power, any one of those sensors will flag the need for power. And when power is needed, the ECM or the ECU will ground the lead to the EGR modulator and actually will force the vacuum to be removed and the EGR valve should close. However, there are cases where that doesn't happen 
and that the EGR valve is stuck and then you have a problem. But we'll see that how we can check this later. In moments when you do not require a lot of power, like cruising along on the highway, then all the sensors, sensors will flag back to the ECM and ECU. No need for lots of power and as a consequence the ECU ECM will remove the ground to the EGR modulator and it will actually release the vacuum and then the EGR valve will actually close up uh, based uh, on the load of a spring. And this is how it works. We have the intake manifold and in front of the intake manifold you can find the EGR valve which stands for emission gas recirculation valve which is either blocking or not blocking fumes from the exhaust system coming into the intake manifold. There is also the vacuum pump which is generating the overall vacuum for the whole system and the vacuum pump is feeding vacuum into a EGR modulator. Now the EGR modulator is controlled right here by the ECM which is the um, engine management system or your computer let's say and the EGR modulator will either apply vacuum to the EGR valve or no vacuum. So when power is required then um, we need all the air coming in from the air compressor going through the intake manifold and feeding the individual cylinders. Under no circumstances do we want to have any exhaust fumes that are sitting in here. We don't want these gases to come in there. So therefore uh, the EGR valve is basically shut, blocked. And to do that uh, it is the role of all the sensors in the car, uh, the MAP and the MAF and the temperature sensors and the RPM and the throttle positioning to inform the ECU that uh, there is power required. When power is required then there will be 5 volts applied to the EGR modulator and when the 5 volt is applied then the EGR valve is actually vented like this over this little air filter. So basically the valve is shut closed and the engine can take full use of the air coming from the turbo. Now imagine now that one moment in time we are now driving along the highway and we don't need a lot of power. Then the different sensors will inform again the ECU that less power is required and the ECU will then order the EGR modulator uh, with a ground signal it, uh, so it will actually lift the 5 volts and now the ground signal will be applied and when the ground signal is applied to the EGR modulator then basically the venting stops and the vacuum which we have right here is then applied through the uh, um, EGR modulator all the way to the EGR valve. So now the EGR valve receives vacuum, the membrane is sucked up and the internal valve is now lifted up allowing gases from the exhaust to come in mix with the normal air from the turbo and hereby reducing the amount of oxygen and hereby then also reducing the amount of X and X gases as we explained before. Now if one moment in time now we need again power then all the sensors again will talk to the ECU all over again and then the ECU will again apply the 5 volts to the EGR modulator, it will remove the ground and now the vacuum that was applied before again will vent along the dotted lines over the little air filter and now the valve will close and as a consequence no more gases can get from the exhaust into the intake manifold and we have full power again. However, the annex gases are now increased again. This is how the um, emission control system is working on a Defender. Very simple. Now, many things can go wrong with this. Um, it's not uncommon to have faulty EGR valves. They may be slow in responding. 
So if you throttle down, it will take a while before you get your power. So that could be a very slow EGR uh, valve. The EGR valve may be stuck open. The EGR valve may be stuck closed. All kind of possibilities. So what we'll do now is some practical measurements on how you can verify all these aspects. And you will need some tools. You will need a vacuum meter and you will need a vacuum pump and a voltmeter because you want to measure the different sensors, you want to measure how much vacuum is applied to the EGR valve. You actually want to check how good the EGR valve can hold the vacuum um, and then you want to actually move it up and down by looking at it with a mirror and we'll do all this in a few minutes from now. So, But so far you've seen how the mechanism is working off emission gas recirculation and in the Defender case it's a modulated system. Unfortunately, it is very, very error prone. And that's why we need to fix it. Now, you'll see many people that are removing the EGR valve, or the whole EGR part actually on the intake manifold. And you can, uh, but if you go to MOT, you may have a problem. You may not be able to pass MOT because you have too much NX gases in your exhaust. So I'm not too sure if it's, that's wise to do. Uh, additionally, uh, if you just change the EGR valve with a blank tube, um, the sensors are still sensing the normal way and it will still drive your EGR modulator basically. So, and the car is not responding, so it will drive it a bit more. So you may actually need a retuning of your ECM and ECU if you really want to get the performance out of it. So this is in short the EGR valve operation and now let's get on to the practical part. Thank you for watching.